Welcome. Welcome, my dear friends. Myself, Professor Dr. Rajendra Raghuvir Deshpande from Pune, Maharashtra State, India. I would like to welcome you all in my Ayurveda Academy YouTube channel. Today, we are going to discuss a very important topic for the especially Ayurvedic medical students as well as Ayurvedic medical doctors. Because when we people, Ayurvedic people, Ayurvedic physician, when sits in the clinic and try to assess the patient, then we have some important examination part. One of the important is the Srotas examination. Srotas is a very specific concept of Ayurveda, which can be compared. It's not equal to, but it's a parallel concept. Like for example, modern science has a digestive system, respiratory system, then circulatory system, excretory. Similarly, Ayurveda has a mention of the Srotas. Srotas is like a channel. And that particular channel, does the function of the substance which that particular srotas is carrying. And in the disease process especially, you know that Ayurveda physiology or the pathology or the science is based on dosha, dhatu and mala concept. Dosha are vata pitta kapha like bioenergies, then dhatus are rasarakta mouse made, aski majja shukra, seven tissues are there and urine, stool and the sweat, these are the three malas. So dosha, dhatu and mala, these are the fundamental principle of Ayurveda. When the doshas get vitiated because of the faulty lifestyle, faulty eating habits, then it attacks on the weaker tissues of the body. And that particular disease manifestation takes place, which is called as a dosha, dusha, sammur chana, janito vyadihi. But that particular vyadi is affecting also particular srotas. Ayurveda says, sroto rodh, that is obstruction, is a very important phenomena in the disease process. Srotoro, the channel obstruction, is the hallmark of the pathology. And also, you can understand that there is a sroto vaigunya. Sroto vaigunya can be genetic, hereditary, or it can be affected because of the previous illnesses, structural deformities, accidents, inside or outside causes. Okay? So, sroto vaigunya and sroto dushti, these are the terminologies of Ayurveda. Ayurveda says, we have the innumerable channels in our body. So, a parisankheya, which cannot be counted, this type of the srutasas are existing in the human body. But for the practical purpose, 13, 1, 3 important srutasas are mentioned and we are going to see one by one this particular srutas examination for these 13 channels. Pranavaha srutas, annavaha srutas, udakavaha srutas. Pran, anna and udak. Then saptadhatu, seven srutasas, Rasava srotas, raktavaha srotas, mausava srotas, medavaha, up to the shukrava srotas. And then also the three srotas are of mala, that mutravaha srotas, purishavaha srotas, svedavaha srotas. So you can count these are 13. In the females, there are some more srotas are like stanyavaha srotas related with the breast milk and also artavaha srotas related with the female reproductive organs like ovaries, and the fallopian tubes and the uterus and etc. So today we are going to see the first Pranavaha Srotas examination. Pranavaha Srotas can be parallel compared to, not exactly equal to respiratory system because Prana is like a external important elements which nourish our body, which keep our body healthy and strong for a longer time. Okay, so this is a Prana. Prana includes your best food, Prana includes your best uh, gaseous exchange, that is oxygenation. This is the important function of prana. And prana is also related with your brain activities. So prana vayu is also another thing. But prana versus rotas is another thing. Okay. So let us talk about prana versus rotas, which can be compared with the respiratory system. So this is the, I am going to explain you each rotasa in three, three ways. Try to write down, the students and doctors can write down. Darshana Pariksha, Sparshana Pariksha and Prashna Pariksha. In Ayurveda, these three modalities are called as a Trividha Pariksha. Will you please write down? Trividha Pariksha. Darshana, that is the inspection. Then Sparshana, that is the palpation, percussion and auscultation. And what is Prashna? Prashna is a history taking or interrogation of the patient. Okay, so these are the three modalities. And we will see the physiological aspect of this darshana, sparshana, prashna, and also the pathological aspect. So first, darshana, pariksha, inspection, we have to see the normalcy first, that is prakrita, 
some words i have written specifically ayurvedic terminology sanskrit terminology nasal patency which is called as a nasa or nasa putta can you see here this is nasa putta the nasal passages are examined to ensure that they are suitable for respiration there should not be any abnormality which we will discuss further chest measurement ur pramana the ratio of the antero posterior diameter to the transverse diameter should be 5 to 7 5 to 7 that means the antero posterior diameter should be 5 and 5 uh, unit and the transverse diameter should be 7 units okay then bilateral movement of my chest both the sides of the chest should exhibit the normal movements during inspiration and expiration then respiratory rate that is a shwasana sankhya the normal respiratory rate should be in between 15 to 18 breath per minute then we will go for abnormality darshana pariksha inspection nasal obstruction you can see by the nasal speculum by the torch nasal polyps nasal here you can see the sinusitis problem these are conditions which can cause obstruction or inflammation of the nasal passage by which we get the rhinitis type of problem pratishaya ayurvedic terminology cold pinus that is sinusitis these all indicate there is a sroto rodh if there is any sinusitis there is definitely kapha uh, molecules are gathering over there kapha is more there secretions are more there and they are obstructing your respiratory system then there is abnormality with the structure that is deviated nasal septum which is called as a dns then you have to see the nasal ulcers nasal tumors these are structural or anatomical abnormalities there may be growth inside the nose these all things carry the sroto rod or sroto vaigunya okay then pharyngeal abnormalities this include conditions like inflammation in ayurveda it is called as a rag or pak especially pak word is for inflammation whether it is a pharyngitis tonsillitis uvulitis you will have to check then examination regarding the voice because in pranava srotas basically two types of the vata doshas are acting one is a prana vayu and second is a udana vayu but here when i am saying prana vayu is a type of panch five types of the vata dosha pran udan vyan saman apan so this prana vayu is not only oxygen rather this prana vayu is nervous control brain control on the respiratory system or brain respiratory center in the brain so all this causes the prana vayu activity in the head and in the chest region and this prana vayu activity is for the inspiration taking the uh, uh, breath inside and udana vayu is antagonistic in uh, direction opposite direction prana vayu from outside to inside and udana vayu from inside to outside what are the functions of udana vayu vak pravrutti prayatna urja bala varna smruti kriya mainly speech so speech you have to check the prana vayu activities udana vayu activities and the different dhatus in prana vayu srotas you have to check voice abnormalities this can be characterized by the change in the pitch of the voice sound quality of the sound strength of the voice these are all related with udana vayu function okay then vocal cord disorders such as there may be some nodules there may be polyp there may be simple laryngitis these are the specific issues affecting the vocal cords sound abnormalities are mentioned in ayurveda these include the variations in the pitch tone strength or the clarity of sound produced during speech the different swara vikruti abnormalities are mentioned with the sanskrit words sham swar bhinn sakt jarjar these are the different uh, adjectives for the abnormal uh, your sounds not the respiratory sounds your voice okay for that matter the laryngoscopy as and when required the doctor must suggest go to the ent specialist and do the laryngoscopy especially to rule out ro means to rule out laryngeal cancer especially if the patient is 50 years old or the more than 50 years then if the patient is complaining of hoarseness of voice more than 3 weeks he has been treated with allopathic ayurveda and all medicines but no relief hoarseness is persistent 
then you must advise the laryngoscopy to rule out the cancer. Next, you have to see any involvement of trachea, the central windpipe, the main respiratory tract where we are breathing in. Evaluation of whether the trachea is centrally placed or deviated here and here. Assess, assessment of the movements of the muscles in the region of the chest, in the region of diaphragm, and in the region of shoulder girdle, especially when there is a patient is breathless. So here, the accessory muscles, they are also showing their activities. These are called as the accessory muscles, extra muscles to take efforts for doing the forceful respiration. Then you have to check the shape of the chest, whether it is a normal or whether it is a barrel-shaped chest, indicating when there is a barrel-shaped chest, chronic breathlessness and cough, especially jirna, shwas, breathlessness, and kas, that is cough. Jirna means chronic. These are the Ayurvedic terminology. Then you have to see the respiratory rate, increased respiratory rate, for example, 40, 50 per minute. It indicates difficulty in breathing, which is very common in bronchial asthma because there is a bronchial spasm. Okay. Then inspection of the neck and upper chest part, presence and swellings or any increased jugular venous pressure is there. All these findings you have to look by the Russian Apariksha. Then color abnormalities. For example, whether there is a pale color of the conjunctiva of the tongue, whether there is a blue color indicating sinusitis, uh, uh, sinusis, I'm sorry, not sinusitis, sinusis, C-Y-A-N-O-I-S-I-S. There is a word, sinusis. Then lips, you have to check the lips, palate, ah, palate, eyes, tongue, whether there is a sinusis, that is a blue, blue discoloration. Intense breath odor, smell, Fruity odor is typically present in diabetic ketoacidosis. When the diabetes patient is there and blood sugar is tremendous high, more than 500, more than 600 milligram percent, then that can cause this hyperglycemia. Hyperglycemia and that causes the diabetic ketoacidosis. Okay. Nail examination. Especially you have to check for the clubbing. This is associated with the COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Then you have to check for sputum, Stevena Pariksha in Ayurveda, whether that uh, sputum is a white color, yellow color, green color. What is that? Green and yellow color always indicate bacterial infection. Pranava Srotas examination, we are going second step, second modality, that is Sparshana Pariksha. Sparshan is a only palpation. It may be like, for example, here I am keeping the this thing and I tap. This is called as a percussion and using the stethoscope, we are doing the auscultation. All these are included in the sparishana pariksha. But first we will see the normalcy, prakritatva, physiological. By placing both the hands on the upper chest region, including the sternum with fingers spread out, the movement of the chest can be seen whether it is a similar on right and left side during the respiration. Movement by touching. Then percussion, as I have told you, percussion, resonant sound, like air inside. When you tap the chest, there is always a resonant sound. But in the liver region, but in the heart region, that is a dull note sound after percussion. Okay. Next is auscultation by stethoscope of the lung sounds, both anteriorly, here anteriorly and posteriorly. You have to check both sides. Sparshana Pariksha, Pranava Srotas examination, palpation, percussion, auscultation, all are Sparshana. Abnormal. Now we are seeing abnormal. Nasal tenderness here. Uh, chronic inflammation here. If I press a ah, patient is here, especially frontal sinus and uh, this paranasal sinuses, it indicates the tenderness, Sparsha Sahatva, Pain during the touch, that is sinusitis. Nasal bone fracture due to the injury. Position of the trachea during the palpation. Deviation here or here, right or left side of the trachea. If my deviation is on my right side, that indicates that there may be some tumor on my left side, which is pressing trachea on the opposite side. Tumor is pressing trachea on the opposite side. But deviation towards the, for example, left side, Indicate of the lung fibrosis on the same side because fibrotic tissues they always con getting this uh, what a pulling effect on that particular trachea. Fibrotic tissues will always pull 
to the trachea on their side. Tumor will press the trachea on the opposite side. So this is very simple, but we can confirm by the X-ray test, okay, or even MRI or the CT scan. Assessment of the movement on both sides of the upper chest, if there is a pleurisy, you know, pleurisy, Ayurveda, it is called as a parshva shula. Parshva shula. Pleurisy is most of the time tuberculous. That is a fluid in the pleural cavity, okay. So if there is a pleurisy, then naturally the movement are very less or diminished on that particular area where the pleurisy is there. Then you have to go for percussion, percussion that is in Ayurveda. Here you can see, always see the script, Akotana Pariksha. Vataja, if the Vataja pathology is there, hyper-resonant sound will be there. For example, emphysema, that is Dhatu Kshayajanya Vata Prakop. Dhatu Kshayajanya Vata Prakop. Emphysema. There is a hyper-resonant sound. But if there is, for example, tumor inside, like a kapha, huh, then dull note, mandadhvani. Even if it is a fluid inside, like parshva shula or pleurisy, then there will be mandadhvani, that is the dull note. We are doing the sparshana pariksha. Now, auscultation. Auscultation is also sparshana by stethoscope. Shabda pariksha in Ayurveda. Abnormal breath sounds. Wheezing. Whistling sound, whistling, huh? whistling sound indicative of respiratory conditions associated with airway obstruction because of the asthma, because of the bronchitis, then that particular obstruction is called as throto rodh. There will be vataja dhvani indicates the vataja shwas or vataja kas. For example, write down bronchi, R H O N C H I, bronchi is a vataja. Whistling, vataja. And RAS, R-A-L-E-S, RAS or crepitations are Kafaja Dhvani, indicative of Kafaja Shwas or Kafaja Kas. Okay, very simple. Now, next we will go crackling or rattling sound, indicative of the presence of excess of mucus or fluid in the lungs, which can be because of pneumonia, because of the pulmonary edema. Then there will be Kafaja Dhvani, indicating Kafaja Shwas or Kafaja Kas. Next, Strida, high pitched, harsh sound, indicating airway obstruction. It may be the croup. Croup is because of the foreign bo body aspiration. Huh? That is also a type of Srotorod and that is the Vataja Dhvani. Diminished breath sounds, reduced intensity of breath sounds, indicating decreased air movement. That is obstructive lung diseases like pneumothorax, there will be kafajadhvani. Next, last but not least, third modality in pranavastrotas pariksha or examination. Darshan, finish. Sparshana, finish. Now, prashna pariksha. Prashna pariksha is interrogation, asking the questions to the patient. Prashna pariksha is history taking, that is, a disease history, illness history, personal history, past history. Family history, all history, okay? Normal. First, we will talk about normalcy. The person's place of residence and occupation, where he is living, where he is working, how is the surrounding environment, whether it is a clean air, without any air pollution, how is the sunlight? Does sunlight reach the person's living area or living residence area or in the working area? Next, about ventilation, Prashna Pariksha. In the environmental well, whether it is ventilated or stuffy, indoor environment, inside, in my room, is the person exposed to the household or dust-related pollutants, whether there is a problem of allergy, dust, more dust, climate, is the environment influenced by the extreme weather conditions, like for the person does not experience any difficulties while breathing, is it right, is it okay? So you have to ask all these questions. Now, next about abnormalities. Vikrita, Prakrita and Vikrita, these are the Ayurvedic terminology. Does the person work in the industry? That patient is working in the factory? For example, textile mill, paper mill, asbestos, dye, chemicals. Then naturally all this can become allergen to that particular patient and can cause allergy. Okay. Is the person allergic to specific substances or conditions? Like, for example, allergy for dust, 
allergy for pollen, allergy for scent, allergy for mold, allergy for flower fragrance, allergy for peanut, eggs, yogurt, tomatoes, guava, specific weather conditions. When there are clouds, black clouds in the sky, you start asthmatic attack. This can is possible. Then is there any underlying medical condition or illness which causes weakness or vulnerability for the infection? For example, if the person is having respiratory diseases, whether he had uh, or going on treatment of AKT, anti-cox treatment, tuberculosis, whether the patient is diabetes, whether it is controlled or not, whether he has done glycosidated hemoglobin test, whether the patient has any problem like pleurisy, cancer, HIV, then that can make a problem with the pranavas rutus. Are there frequent question, 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 prashta pariksha, interruptions in natural urges, like for example, bowel movements, urination, sleep, tears. In Ayurveda, this concept is very important. It is called as a vague avarodh. Vague is a natural urge. When I want to eat very strong hunger, I must eat. When I want to go urine, I must go for the urination. When I have the uh, spasm for the going to the stools, I must go for the toilet. If I am obstructing, if I am not going because of the meetings, because of some occupied uh, situation, I am not taking my tiffin. I am not going to the uh, urination. That is very bad according to Ayurveda, which is called as a Vega Varodh. And that can be a supportive cause for any Pranavasrutas problem. Do you experience a significant dryness of the body? Because this Vegavarot can cause always Vata Prakup. Remember my word, Vata Prakup. And Pranavasutas is basically controlled by Vata Dosha. Okay? Do you experience a significant dryness indicating Vata Dosha problem? Because Vata Dosha properties, you know, Tatra Ruksho Lagushi Taha Karasukshmash Chalonilaha. Whether any symptoms indicating dryness, like constipation is there, dryness, hoarseness of voice, lusterless eyes, dry skin, loss of elasticity, fissure on the palms and soul, does the excessive physical exertion his patient is doing and he is not taking a proper balanced nutritious diet, then that can cause dhatu kshayajanya vata prakup. Dhatu kshayajanya vata prakup. Okay? Then pranavasrotas examination, family history. Mother, father, grandfather, uncle, aunt, do any of these people suffer from the asthma, allergies, skin disorders? Then you ask to the patients whether he is experiencing most of the time cold symptoms. What is the nature of the discharge? Whether it is a thin and watery? If it is a thin and watery, it indicates vata problem. If it is a yellowish and greenish, indicating pitta problem, imbalance. If it is a thick and white and sticky, then it indicates the kapha imbalance. Loss of homeostasis. Do you, you ask the patient, do you feel breathless? Does he feel like a tightness in the chest? Whether he feels cuff with expectoration? Sir, cuff and ishtivana. And how is the color of the sputum? White, yellow or green? Because yellow green indicates infection. Next question. Pranavasrutas examination. Prashna Pariksha. When does breathlessness occur? Is it after physical exertion? That is called as a Shramaj Shwas in Ayurveda. Shramaj Shwas, exertional dyspnea, may be most of the times cardiac origin. Ischemic heart disease, angina pectoris. Whether your breathlessness is not related with exercise, but related with the environment changes, triggered by the certain factors, accompanying by wheezing sounds, may be due to the bronchial asthma or a feeling of choking, after breathlessness, tightness of the breath, breathlessness, you must ask all these accompanying symptoms. Consider the individual history about the allergies. Whether you can ask him whether you had previously some parasite, parasitic infection like worms, round worm, thread worm, uh, tape worm, hook worm, and also antamoeba histolytica, amoebiasis, or whether he is suffering from giardiasis, if necessary, do the hemogram ESR. If necessary, do the stool examination to rule out this parasitic infection, which is a cause of allergy. Then, is their breathing especially rapid, fast, slow, whether it is difficult, whether that respiration is with the pain, whether that respiration is irregular, all these things we have to ask. Now, last but not least, 
although we are doing ayurveda although we are doing homeopathy physiotherapy whatever it may be science is a science these all the investigations is not a monopoly of allopathy yes they are uh, doing this for years together but we ayurvedic people also can do this test as a complementary test to confirm our diagnosis of vata pitta and kapha confirm our diagnosis about degeneration strotorod etc first we can do chest x ray posterior anterior view lung function test like spirometry then pleural tapping for the pleurisy bronchoscopy or laryngoscopy sputum examination for acid fast bacilli that is tuberculosis sputum if the antibiotic the doctor has given and culture and sensitivity then hemogram and esr and stool for the worms so my dear friend this is all about pranava stotos examination and i am going to complete all the series of 13 stotos examination so please to get this all the knowledge you uh, are requested to subscribe this particular my channel and also like this video share this video and don't forget to press the bell button icon to get the intimation of newly uploaded videos mostly every day by the professor dr desh pandey thank you very much milte hain i will see you in the next video till then you keep healthy and happy thank you very much